All right, so just from reading this question, I can see that there are at least two approaches to answering this question. So we have a candle here burning at a constant rate of negative 1.8 inches per hour. Uh, it's been burning for three hours, and after the candle was lit, it reached a length of 8.6 inches long. So, all right, so it's moving at a constant rate, which means that it's linear. That's good because that makes things a little easy for us. Um, so, and it's only been burning for three hours. So that's not that long, being that our rate's moving per hour. So since it's only been burning for three hours, we can kind of backtrack. We can backtrack the lit. Um, we can backtrack the lit over three hours to figure out what it originally was. So I have a little chart here to the left, to the right that I'm going to use. Um, so our left column we're going to use for hours. Uh, we're going to use the variable t since that's the variable they're using at the bottom down here for hours. T for time, right? And L for lint. That'll be our inches. So if we want to figure out what the original lint was, we want, we're basically trying to figure out what was the lint at zero hours before the candle burned it off. So say one hour has passed, two hours has passed, three hours passed, and we know that our candle is now at a lint of 8.6. All right. So this is what we have. So our rate's moving at negative 1.8. So if I want to figure out what was the lint after four hours, for example, what I would do is take that 8.6 and I would subtract 1.8. I would subtract 1.8 because that's our rate of change. It's like our slope. That's the rate that this candle is shrinking or getting smaller. So we want to figure out the original lint, though. So we're going to go backwards. So if we're going to go backwards, we're going to take that 1.8 and we're going to add it to our lint. So we're going to take that 1.8, we're going to add 1.8. So since we had 8.6 at three hours, if we add 1.8, and I'm going to switch the text here because my pen uh, hasn't been consistent. All right, so we have uh, 8.6. Uh, so if we take our 8.6 and add 1.8, what we get is, let me please check my math, we get 10.4. We get 10.4. So that will be 10.4 at two hours. So if we continue to add 1.8, we will get 11, uh, 12.2. Check my math. I'm not using a calculator. I'm doing this in my head. So at one hour, after the candle burned for one hour, it had a length of 12.2 inches. So if we add another 1.8 to 12.2, we get 14. So this means our original candle length was 14 inches. 14 inches. All right, so we have it. So we backtracked our candle lit by adding 1.8 over and over again, and we know that our candle lit was 14 inches. So if we want to write an equation to represent this, we've basically kind of created that in several ways. So on our table that we have here, you can look at its coordinates. So at zero, uh, that's our y-intercept. 14 inches is our y-intercept. And it also gave us a point that we originally started with, which was the 3.86. Um, so if we look at these coordinates, they gave us a point that we started with. And if you're thinking of equations, uh, one thing that comes to mind is point slope form. And they give us a y. Um, they give us a rate before I get to y intercept. They give us a rate or slope, the, the negative 1.8, right, which is important for any linear equation. All right. So we can write an equation. Uh, one way we can write an equation is by writing an equation in slope-intercept form. So we can do our famous y equals mx plus b. So we know our slope is negative 1.8, and our y-intercept is 14.0. So bam, we have an equation in slope-intercept form, negative 1.8x plus 14. So but we had to find that 14. We wasn't given that at first. So what we were given was a point at first. So we can try to write an equation in point slope form. So point slope form, we was given that we had a y coordinate of 8.6 was our which was our original length. We know that our slope was negative 1.8. And we know that our original time was three hours. So we can also write an equation of point slope form down here at the bottom that represents this represents the same scenario. 